You're listening to the Getting Salty Experience Podcast. We already got yeah. Pete reeling in the back. We got him reeling, bro. He's, He's punch reeling, drunk. Right? That's why we're late. He's a little bit punch drunk. <laughs> if you guys send me the damn pictures, baby, I'll have them. <laughs> He's like, all right, we're all ready to go <laughs> with the pictures. Pete, we, we got three pictures. He goes, oh, yeah, that's all I got. I'm yeah. Like, where, where, where Where's doing? the five pictures? Uh, uh, I don't know. But and he was like, I right, look at the face. We got Ruffy. Look at the face. <laughs> Look at the face. I see it. I see it. No, but which one got him? When when Huey said that well, his son, Huey said his sons are uh, like producers. Like producers Is he looking for a job? I said they're, they're engineers. Uh, <laughs> you can, I could be an correct. engineer if that's what you want me to do. It's the no slide problem. on the nineteen with the seven. You could be a, you could be a producer too. If that's I could what you be. Want I could be. Do. Listen, I could straight up. I'll be. A, I'll be an engineer if you want me. To. <laughs> you got to be you a producer I mean? first, then you'll be the engineer. No, Anywho, that's not the way that goes. <laughs> Anywho, uh, welcome back. To getting salty experience podcast. The only one that brings Pete all punch drunk back to the kitchen table. <laughs> the only one that brings the firehouse kitchen table to you. Shut this, up, <laughs> silly woman. <laughs> Not bad. Welcome, right. back. Welcome back. Good job. <clears throat> we're doing good. Yeah, we're doing good. Yeah, uh, self-proclaimed best podcast in the whole world. Even when Petey doesn't put the pictures up, we got the best podcast in the world. Yep, we got a good guest tonight. I'm I always tell message. you guys that you go. firefighters are the most creative, talented MFs on the planet, and you will see that tonight, bro. You'll see it tonight in one Huey Lynch. But before that, Pete. We got some business to take. Business take care. Uh, tonight we have just some simple business for the audience. You guys already know the deal. Getting salty apparel dot com, where you will find t-shirts like this. You ask why? Because that's what men do. Uh, we have our tumblers. We have our accessories, the firefighter accessories and apparel. That's hoodies, hats, shot glasses, prank <clears throat> glasses. We got pictures. We got fire Ranger photos. Jerseys. Ranger jerseys. We got uh, all those things. You, you know what's coming in Friday? You know what's coming in Friday? The underwear, bro. The box of briefs. Right. That's a pulling case of emergency right on the Johnson. <laughs> That's what right it says. And it also Johnson. says, uh, what does it say? Pack ho uh dry and pack hose when finished. <laughs> That's not bad. Coming in, not bad. Coming in hot on not, Friday. Not That's bad. Not bad. <laughs> so stay tuned. All that'll yeah. be up uh tomorrow. Uh getting salt at getting salty apparel.com. That's how we pay the bills. Also, how we pay the bills around here, guys, is in the super chat. Uh, that is you guys being our number one sponsors. If you guys want to throw us a few shekels in the lower right hand corner of your chat page, there's a little dollar symbol. Uh, whatever it is, it could be a buck, it could be two bucks, it could be whatever you want. We always appreciate that. Uh, if you guys want to throw us a few shekels, that's cool. And if not, that's cool too. Thank you very much for yeah. watching the show. Just remember to like, subscribe, and share. That's the number one thing you guys could do for us. Uh, and it's totally free. Um, and uh, you know, you'll find us also on audio as also, well, which I'll give you all that info at the end of the show. Boom. Send us some pictures so Pete cannot put them up. So yeah, we got I'm gonna going. yeah, I'm gonna collect all your photos and then completely disregard them. That's yeah. what I do. Yeah. That's what all I right. do. Yes, Dickhead. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, listen, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about what happened in Texas. So before we get into the shits and giggles, we'll take a moment here. Everybody say a prayer. And remember that tomorrow is not guaranteed or promised. So hold on to your little ones tight and say a prayer for those families who, who lost their children. I can't imagine. You'd have to stick one in me, bro. You'd have to stick a slug in me if that was me. But say a prayer. They're in our prayers. And uh, hopefully God will watch over them. Now we can get to the shenanigans. All right. Uh, if, I, if I, it happened to see an empty seat where Louis is, he's just going to check the score at a range of game frequently. No, I, got the, I got it up here. Oh, uh, so if he's sta <laughs> if he's staring off to the right or the left, so my mother can yell at him again. Yeah, yeah. He's not yeah. paying attention. Well, I, wore, I wore my good luck jersey, so the jersey's yeah. been working. So I haven't it, watched this it. is what I got today. Doesn't Louis know that's unprofessional to do that? that oh my! Well, yeah. then, cool. if they lose, we'll be going like this. So. Uh, Lou, tell us, tell us your deepest emotions it and your feelings. I was, I was born in Brooklyn, and uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. All right, all right. Let's not waste any time. Let's get him in here. He's a, a rock star. Oh. He's a firefighter, rock star. Here he is. Let's bring him in, Huey Lynch. What's up, fellas? You go. You go. It's my man. He's already. 
But Alrighty. before we get to that, bro, before we get that, we got to do our patriotic duty as good patriotic Americans. Do it, Pete. We sure do, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now more than ever, we need uh, a little bit of unity, and uh, that has always come through in the United States. Uh, we are one nation. Mm -hmm. uh, so I present to you, ladies and gentlemen, as always, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Excellent. Uh, QCP says, has, a, has a good point there. If we start to see Lou's vein popping out of his head, we know what the score is, bro. So. <laughs> <laughs> Show could go south very quickly. <clears throat> I'm like, fuck a man. I'm like, fuck <laughs> You can act like a man. All right, so what are we, how are we going to start it up? We're going to have you go. Uh, uh, we got to have the word of the day first for oh, all the alcoholics out there. Yes, yes, yes. We do have some uh, people who are eagerly waiting. Uh, to drink so let's not waste any more of their time ladies and gentlemen oh, look at that the word of the day is rock star nice. i'm sure that word won't come up too often today nah <laughs> uh, let's have you want to have him strum one out before yeah, we let's dive into his fire career yeah yeah let's go flip yeah. one out let's see what right, he's got test the waters so I'm going to dedicate the first one to Eddie Staines. He's a captain of Squad One. I just found out that he passed away today. So oh, this one goes sucks. out to Eddie and anybody else that we've lost. If you know it, sing it with me, even though I won't be able to hear you. But. I got you. When I got the news today, I didn't know what to say. So I just hung up the phone. I took a walk to clear my head. This is where the walk in lay. You believe you're really gone. Don't feel like going home, so I'm gonna sit right here. On the edge of this pier, watch the sun set disappear. Yeah. Drink a beer and drink a beer. Drink 
to be. Drink to be. Nice job, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it, that, that's for Coops, too. He punched out the, the little country right off the box, man. I like little, it. little country. Right. Little yeah, baby. Actually, Chris Stapleton wrote it just to set the record straight. Coops, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, Lou got me at the country driving 13 hours to Indianapolis <laughs> in the car. So I, I had no choice. I took a nap. <laughs> But what kind of country <laughs> is it? Is it good old fashioned country, or is it, or, or is it like, like le leather, leather pants country? No, nah. like, the, like twenty year old. I like the eighties and nineties the best. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but uh, he fell asleep, and I was still listening to it. Believe it or not, <laughs> I don't know. Kind of, it, it I, know, I, up. I don't know. Happy country's the best. The lyrics, I'm, I'm singing the lyrics. It's all about America, drinking, <laughs> love. I mean, that's great stuff, bro. There's some uh, new artists yeah. who are really good right now that we're throwing it back. So, uh, yeah, the old days. Yep. Wow. I'll put you I'm going to say, up. Huey, great job. You're like nice. a rock star, bro. Oh, we got hey! right. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, let's get going. What do we got? All right, we're going to dive right into Huey's childhood, where it all started. Huey, where'd you grow up? What made you become a fireman? Any family in the fire service? Talk to us. All right, I uh, grew up in Poor Boy in Brooklyn. Way back when, 1964, mm -hmm. St. Rose Parish. There's my dad, Jimmy Lynch. Wow, look at that guy, huh? Very handsome man. Yeah, Fighting man. Him off. Wish I was half as handsome as he was. Uh, he passed away a few years ago. And uh, you're trying to make me cry now. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. You're, good. you're good, baby. You're good. You're good you have brothers and sisters? <laughs> Yeah, I have uh, one brother, my sister. My sister passed away a few years ago. We really oh, Lou, good job, Lou. Yeah, Lou, good job, away. Bob. Good job, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's all good. Yeah, I got one brother. And, That's uh, from Lou's uh, signal right now. It's a little broken up. Yeah. Sorry, you. No, it's all right, man. And, uh, uh, so why'd you become a fireman? Family? Who, who pushed you in the direction of the fire service? You know, I, I took the test, man. I just uh, My uncle was a fireman. He worked in 148 for a lot mm -hmm. of years. Uh, Doug O'Connell, and uh, you know, I used to like. I guess a lot of other people. I hear the firings that run to the front, you know, to the window. I lived in an apartment uh -huh. building, watch them go by, exciting. And then, you know, as I got older, I was into music, playing music. I really didn't think about it too much, but he, you know, gave me the application, said fill it out, take it. I think I was 17 when I, you know, 17 and a half, whatever that minimum thing is. Yeah, 17 and a yeah. half. And you, were doing, and you were doing this crap. Oh, yeah. look at that guy, bro. <laughs> so right. it's been, it, it's this, this whole, uh, the music deal has been with you for, uh, since you were a kid, huh? Yeah, that's the skin flute I'm playing. Right <laughs> <laughs> He's, you know what he was good at? He's good at beating you to the punch. Yeah, yeah man. He yeah. on that yeah. one. He I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. <laughs> So that's actually probably stairway to heaven, you know. Back in the seventies, you have. Oh stairway. man! Well, so what did you what did you pick up first, the drums or what was your drums. first? The drums, yeah. huh? Yeah, drums actually my best uh, mm. my best instrument. I I feel anyway is drums. Look at that's you, multi talented, bro. What was the name? What was the oh, name? Oh, go the back. Band? What was the name of the band again? Oh, that name was Skullduggery. <laughs> Listen, when in doubt, throw the word skull in anything. Oh, or throw skull, it on a shirt, and, and you're good, right? Word. <laughs> It was in my friend's front yard. We just blasted it out right in the middle of the street. Uh, how did the skull duggery come together, bro? Are you all just friends and uh yeah, yeah. We actually started out with a bunch of acoustic guitars when no one knew how to play anything. And I was banging on the drums and all stone songs, like you weren't allowed to play anything else but stone songs. <laughs> And then, like every other thing, we threw everybody else out of the band, and it was me and a guitar player, and we just played all summer, all summer, doing with two tape recorders, you know, bouncing back and forth, yeah. making terrible music. And then uh, what we needed a bass player, so we just enlisted any one of our friends. Yeah, hey, you can play bass. Yeah, yeah. we gave it to him. And uh, yeah, we did that for like a year, 
and then uh, I went to high school and met a couple. Wait, wait, of you gotta, you gotta tell, you gotta play that that hit from the Skull Duggeries, bro, that you played for us before. A couple of notes uh, of the hit yeah, from first, Skull Duggeries. Our first song is "We Hate Fat Bitches." Oh yes, we do. All we want to say is "fuck you." Very creative. <laughs> Made it all the way wow, to the top that of the is... That was the hook. Oh, <laughs> my God. Made it all the way Great to the lyrics. top of the Was she named yeah. Karen, the fat bitch in the song? Karen. You, you want to know what? No, it was Helen. Karen. It was Helen. Oh, it's Helen. Her, mm -hmm. sister, her sister was Karen. Oh. And, and, rest, and she, rest in peace, Hendry Hill. Yeah, and uh, she broke up with your friend, right? So that's where the inspiration yeah, came a... for that. <laughs> <laughs> Raw emotion that, right there. That's fucking great, man. Oh, my goodness. So you take the test, but all the while, what do you do before that? Playing in bands or you, you got a job? Yeah, or what do you do? Bands, driving, all driving, delivery jobs. I, used, I love to drive. You know, It wasn't a big step when I got to the fire department to drive because I loved it. I always loved whipping around all over the place. <clears throat> and uh, I just waited. I, I waited. I had to wait extra long because... The uh, they had the lawsuit for the women wanting to get on the job, so I took right. the test. I took the test in '82, and I didn't get hired until '88. And I wasn't wow. low on the list. I think I was twenty-one seventy-four or something like that was my my list number. So it took a while, and uh, it was great. I got uh, sworn in, and then immediately furloughed till September. A couple well, of months. Well, I why did they do that? What was that all about? Because as of July 1st, the old contract was over. So right. they hired 300 of us on uh, July 5th. So the first class went in. I was in the second class, so the 300. And we were the first group of guys that got stretched to the five-year stretch for pay. So, oh, and so that, didn't get that? Settled. that didn't get settled. So I worked for a year. I actually got demoted. I worked. And then I went to work one day, and the boss is like, "Oh, congratulations! You're third, you know, you're third grade now. You know, you get the big pay job." Everybody's like, "Ooh!" I went back the next set of toys. He goes, uh, "Bro, you, you you got demoted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you gotta, gotta wait five years. the money yeah, yeah. the money comes on the end of the, your stretch. The, the five yeah, years. Great. Yeah, that was great. I forgot that it went from three to five years to get the top pay. Right, that's all. Uh, yeah. your Wow. Yeah, I thought I was I thought I was gonna slip in, but uh you'll see as we go on. It's it's a pa <clears throat> pattern in my career. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you get uh you get out of Proby school, it takes it's a six to eight weeks, uh, and you get assigned you want to, to hundred something interesting that happened to me in Proby school. Hell yeah, yeah bro. Absolutely. Mass confidence, right? That was big, big. That was it. If you pass the mass confidence, it's like you got your ticket, right? That yeah. was like the hardest thing they Beat it into you. You got to do the mass comment. So we do it. I was in probably school with the uh, guy that I grew up with. We all go back to his house that night. We get all banged up. That's a Thursday. So <laughs> Friday morning, I, I get shaken awake. And I'm like, oh, what the hell? I, I, I didn't even know what, what the fuck happened. <laughs> Come on. We got to go. We got to go. I said, all right. All right. Get up. Get dressed. All ready to go. I go to take a piss. I, I go by the mirror, and the, my side of my fucking head is like a basketball. It's this big. My eye is all fucked. I'm like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> oh, you, you know, we tried to put you in the shower, and you fell. I'm like, oh okay. Then he goes, nah, you know, me and him always used to fight when we were kids. And uh, so I, to this day, I don't know what happened, but <laughs> <laughs> I had to fucking tap out. I <laughs> oh, like, oh, my God. That's I was crazy. like, oh, my God. I call up Saturday morning. I call up. I tell my story, you know, to the guy. He don't give a fuck. He's down in the medical office on Lafayette Street. <clears throat> he goes, yeah, come down. He goes, you should wear your, your Class A outfit. I didn't know I was getting set up. So oh, I walk no. in. You know, I do the whole, I'm a probie. I don't know what I'm doing. I give yeah, him the yeah, whole story. Class days, yeah. This guy's name is Lieutenant Lynch of all. Of all <laughs> oh, my Imagine God. Imagine that, an Irish guy on the job. Takes, takes me by the hand, opens the door, and says, hey, look what we have here. Probationary firefighter Lynch. She went sick from probie school. <laughs> and it all, it all started from there. The whole place erupted. You fucking scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> you no career. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Head bag, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. And I got my ass rammed down on Monday when I got to school. That the uh, Captain Sacramento was the uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Little short, little short, the acting chief. Yeah. 
Oh man, he was up and down me all over the place. I find out you're in a bar. Yeah, I'll step on, step on your cock. I'll step on your cock. That's what you got. That's what he used to say all the time. I'll step on your cock. Wow. Yeah. You think you're going to skate through Proby School? You are so yeah, yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Thank God there was only like two weeks left. Is so, he like Judge me, Smales? The medical office didn't like, you know, tell them that, you know, I shouldn't really be doing stuff because I can have a potential concussion. So I just went with that. Oh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah, my eyes fucked up, but I'm good. So. <laughs> I can't you went to it for you right now. Your <laughs> arm's <laughs> falling off in Proby School. You can't tell. No, no. You can't tell. <laughs> Walk in I mean, with the arm and hang it off. I don't know how it yeah. now, but I got I gotta tell a quick Sacramento story, bro. So he, he his old th thing was always if you guys fuck up again, I'm gonna step on your cock, right? He used to say that all the time. I forgot what we did. The whole class was in trouble, and, and they were like Sacramento's coming out to address you guys. So oh, everybody's shit. everybody's standing in line, right? He comes flying out. I don't know why he forgot his patented line, and he comes out. And if I gotta come down here, you guys again, I swear to God, I'm gonna. Eat your ass, right? A whole bunch of guys are giggling, and he just turns his head. He walks away uh, like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that is too tricky. Uh, that moment, he put his paper in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, my God almighty. That's too funny. Uh, so tell us about 161, bro. You get to go to a truck. Do you have any hooks? What happened? Uncle Johnny? Uh, fucking put nah, a hook not really. I mean, I, I, I called my uncle. You know, he was friends with Jerry O'Donnell. So, I, you know. That's how I ended up there. I didn't know where. I had no idea. I had no idea where I was going. I told mm -hmm. him, put me in the middle of the road, you know, and that's mm -hmm. that's where he put me. It was a great place. Crazy, 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 crazy place. A lot of fun. <laughs> a lot of fun. And we did some fires, mm -hmm. too. We did do some yeah. fires, but we fucking mm -hmm. ran on balls. Like, Lou, you, you can identify yeah. with this, man. We did like 4,500 runs, no shit, from May till October. Wow. And then after October came, <laughs> slow up. fucking three oh, runs. No. We went from literally doing 30 runs. We'd have, you know, run pools. We'd do 30 runs in a 24. And after October, that was it. Does it, down it, was, it, was, it was down in Coney Island. Everybody was out. With the guys. Ah, everybody, they used to run up and down the boardwalk, pull them by. It was all pull box, pull box, pull box. But we'd right, so that, so in the winter time, box. it's, it's, it's uh, desolate down there in the winter. Yeah, well, right? nobody's so, going out to pull the box. Anymore, yeah. You know? yeah. They're not hanging out. You see who's kneeling down there, Coops? There you go. I saw this picture. Who was that? Yeah, Terry you guys, you guys, you guys recognize the guy. Get out of here. Terry, Terry, Terry yeah, fell, fell twice. twice. Fell twice. <laughs> Terry smells nice. Terry had a million. <laughs> <laughs> Terry <laughs> felt. I wow. like Terry. He was a good guy, man. He's a good yeah, dude, man. Good guy. Good guy. Who else we got there? Nice we, got, there. we got the buzz bomb. The guy, uh, he's the chauffeur, the old guy there. Safest man on the job. Safest buzz man bomb. on the job. I had I was the OV one time and fucking fires blowing out the window. I'm in the basket. I'm like, bro, give me the fucking stick. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I gotta I gotta put the the lock in. I gotta put the pin. <laughs> like, Are you fucking kidding me? Hold on. Take me first. Yeah. Fucking fires blowing out. I'm having a hard on. I want to jump up there and get in. He's he was good. Good guy though. Good guy. I All right, this Tony piece. Tony No Thumbs Nicosia. Take you need a close up of his thumbs. He's got no fucking thumbs. They're like they're like <laughs> which guy? A guy on the left? Or no, which all guy? Right. yeah, next to next to Buzz, you all the way to the other side. Other no, side, the other, way. the other way, the other uh, way. Uh, 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 okay, okay, coming up. Yeah, that guy. I'm looking at his. I'm looking for his uh, thumbs. Yeah, because he has none. You're gonna be looking for ten years, bro. Hey, is that <laughs> is that Jimmy Canelli? On the other side? Yeah, on the end. Yeah, all the way on the other side. Oh, ah, I work with Jimmy Canelli. Good dude, yeah, man. Good man. Good man. And that's Tommy Jordan. He actually, he's the reason why I ended up in mm. sock. Eventually. He worked with Timmy Stackpole. He was from 147. He was just mm. playing it up. You guys got to train. You got to train. You got to train. So he kind of turned me and a bunch of other guys around that were there. Not that we were bad, but we just weren't. We had different priorities. We were having fun. Right. We were young, you know. We had great bosses. There were some really heavy hitting bosses from old school companies and stuff that were teaching us all kinds of stuff. But this guy came, he was young, you know, he really wanted us to, to get into the job. And, and he right. got a couple of us to really get into it. So it was it was a lot of fun. He was good. So like a rock star back there. It does. Hey. Check it out, bro. Oh shit. I, I was I was still trying to hang on to it then. You could you could do whatever you want then. I had long hair, I had a ponytail mm. sticking out the back. You can't see it, but you know. Nice. It's trouble. They told me I couldn't have an earring, I got another one. You know, you when you're a fucking two year 
you're a two year wonder. You think you know everything. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, Jimmy Jimmy Canelli actually went on to be building skyscrapers in Manhattan, right, bro? Yeah, 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 man. He, he went big. He's he, good the, dude, man. He, he, is, he made yeah. a grab. I think he made a grab on the 59th Street Bridge too, didn't he? Uh, lock himself in and, and yeah, pull the probably, guy up. I, I don't I don't know the story, but I think yeah. I remember something like that. Yeah, he was yeah. he was an animal. That guy, you know, he loved his cups, and then when he stopped <laughs> doing that, you know, he had that personality. He he started running. Yeah. Ran his first marathon and he ran for the fire department team, or or actually they wouldn't let him run for some reason because you know it's his first marathon, and he fucking came in like sixtieth or something in in yeah. the whole marathon. Yeah, you know, like, he was he, he was did, a maniac. Did, like under three hours, he fucking. But then he, he had shin splints. He couldn't run after that. He ran so hard and went crazy that he ended up with shin splints and fucked him up. But yeah, that's the kind of guy. He's driven, totally driven. Now. Yeah, I worked out. He was my workout partner in 16 truck when he went up to 16 truck, and then and the rescue yeah. one kept trying to recruit him, but he didn't want to go to sock. I don't know why, man. Uh, he's, he's a man. Good guy. He's so busy. He's, you know. There's another picture there of 161 is. FPD, I believe. It's close up. Uh, let's see if I find it. Keep going, guys. I'll I'll pick it up. Yep, yeah, I got it. There you right. go. Picture. I'm showing with pictures tonight. Oh, oh look at that guy, man. That's a chubby. On, I, got, I, I was going to say, that's a, that, that's a plop I got my flaps down. I got my, my collar up, my flaps down. <laughs> yeah, you look like you're ready. Was, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a, that, that was big for back then. That was big. That, that's that a burrow, Huey, there, bro. I actually had a I had a hood in my pocket, too, which was uh, wow, very, see, very rare back then. Very rare. So Unless you were... When you were 161, was Lafamina already in in squad one, or was he yeah, still he was 164? In squad one. He was, yeah, in, squad no, he was one. in squad. Yeah, he left right before I got there, though. Ah, all right, bro. Uh, so you're in 61. You got any good fire stories from 161, or what? Uh, well, my first fire ever. Yeah, was comical. I uh, I get first night tour. I go in. I, I my first tour. Captain go to roll call. Captain goes. I'm gonna give you the irons, kid, so you could say you had the irons for your first tour. I'm like, oh, okay. Shit. Nice. Right. Wow. You went to the Proby school for fucking six weeks, bro. You don't really, <laughs> never really learn a whole lot. You like this? They just kind of threw you out there. I had a concussion for the last two, so I. Really <laughs> <laughs> I don't know shit. Yeah. Oh so, so I get the irons. So uh, good night to all. You know. They teach me how to cut garlic. I didn't know what a fucking head of garlic was. In my house, it was in a shaker. You know what I mean? I had no idea. <laughs> they told me how to cut the garlic. We had a good meal. Go to sleep. One o'clock in the morning, we get a box. I hear guys yelling, you know, banging on a window. I'm like, what? What's going on? You go, we got a job. We're going to jump. I'm like, wow, really? Holy shit. So first two went to the rear. I don't know why. They went in that way. So now we're at the front door. We get to the door. I got the irons. I'm like standing there. And my buddy Tommy Geiger, great guy, looks at me and he goes, Give me those fucking things. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I don't know what the fuck to do. They say, First of all, we go in. I fucking put my mask on. I crawl in. I get about five feet in. I'm like, Rrr! I put the brakes on. I'm like, Holy fuck, I'm in somebody's house. And it's on fire. Uh, <laughs> Somebody fucking crawls on my back. I'm like, Holy shit. I fucking wake up. And now I, I start searching and everything. Oh my god! It was uh, it was an event. First that night, was, huh? Was, I gotta tell you though, that's the fucking last time that ever happened. Ah! Last time anybody ever got a tool for me, and anytime anybody ever got ahead of me, so you gave it up. Ruffy gave his can up I one time. Up. He never did again. <laughs> my one and only time, I gave it up. Sweet. Yeah. That's so what, who, who pushes you in the direction of Squad One, then, bro? What how, what makes you realize that you want to go to Sock? Because you seem like uh, a pretty laid back guy, really not that. Uh, yeah, actually, know, actually, ah. Will, actually, Billy Walsh. You guys know Billy Walsh, right? He was yeah. the captain of uh, Forty One. Yeah, he was a maniac in his younger years, and uh, then he <laughs> then he wasn't, and wanted to go to work, and and so he he started fishing around. He knew Freddie, <clears throat> so somehow, however, he, he got it. He he went to Squad One. I think he went to One Hundred Three first. I think. And transferred on a skin and then ended up going to squad one. Well, where was he? Was he in 161? Is that how you knew him? He was in 161, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so he was in a few companies, but he was there when I, when I was there. I love Will, but he's one of those guys. You, you love him, you hate him. He's a fucking maniac, but he's a great guy. So he's like, 
you got to come over. You got to come over. I'm like, okay. I didn't know anything about it. I had no idea. So then we're at a, a, a basement fire under the L on 86th Street. And in Coney Island, you never see, we didn't see Rescue 2. We didn't see Squad 1 ever. Squad wasn't even signed on it, unless it really got bad. And then when I came out, all of a sudden I see Rescue 2's rig there. It was a, you know, multiple or something, because it was so far away. Just like now, nah, so, so far. Well, now five comes over, but oh, sorry, that's a sore point. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm, I come out of the, I come out of the basement and I hear this fucking rig coming down the block, and it like skids to a halt in front, and we, the fire wasn't going out. It was in the cellar. These fucking guys jump off the rig, and they just like, <laughs> go to the chief, shake their heads, grab the line, down, out. And it was I mean, that's squad my one? story, and, and I've heard that story from so many <clears> other guys with <throat> different fires where the, it wasn't going out, and they just write down and they get back on the rig, and they drive away. I'm like, I, that's me. I I went I to another, I would go to another fire with a fast truck. We were, well, we were the fat engine or fast truck. It was when it first started coming out, and uh, going from front to rear, rescues in there. The engine was with us. Uh, 245 engine and uh, the probe he was on nozzle. I don't know if you guys know Augie Orlando. He's uh, he's a chief now. All of a sudden, you see the, the windows going out psh, 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 one by one. Front window goes out. All of a sudden, the hand reaches out and grabs the rail, the uh, window sill. I'm like, the fuck is that? We're standing out front. And all of a sudden, I see Augie all disheveled and fucked up. Later on, like, what the fuck? What was that about? He goes, the engine couldn't make it, and I'm in the hallway, and there's a guy behind me from rescue. He goes, kid, you want to put a fire out? And he goes, <laughs> of course. Gave him nozzle and pushed him all the way through. And I said, what the fuck were you doing at the end? He goes, he told me, reach out, reach out, reach out. And he goes, and I touched the thing, and he goes, touch that. I was like, wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, now we're in. Now we're inside. Artie Connolly's the boss until Joe O'Donnell, Squad One's in there, and we're all in the back room pulling, getting all snotty. And all of a sudden, I hear them go, "Oh, we got another party!" And they go, "Whoop!" Go and they're out. I'm like, "Huh? What's that all about?" I was like, "I gotta go there." So from fire to fire to fire. Yeah. So what happened? The real, the real push. Okay, I went to see uh, Jimmy Ellison Senior. Real nice guy. And so he's like, well, you know, there was a, a waiting list then. So I ended up, I hurt myself doing something. I don't know. I'm on light duty. I go to rescue three as security. They were getting their quarters done over on 176th Street. So I was there for a month or so. And I met John Hopkins. Start talking. I wow. tell him, yeah, I'm thinking about going to squad one. He's like, Really? He goes, oh, I need to ride home. He goes, you want to you drive me home? He goes, you know, I said, all right. He lives down in... Uh, Alphabet City. Which place? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, no, it's not <clears> Alphabet <throat> City. It's... Uh, what the fuck is the name of that? The houses on First Day. <coughs> <coughs> anyway, Stuyvesant Town? Stuyvesant Town. Yes, Town. yes, yes. And Jimmy Ellison Sr. lives there. He goes, oh, I know him. He goes, and we're talking in the car on the way down. He goes, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to him for you. I'm telling you, once I get back from uh, medical leave, from light duty, I got a call, and I was over there. Wow. So, uh, Happy John, a good dude, John was a good dude, man. He, he really helped me yeah. out. So How much time that's it. Have, the rest is history. did you have in the truck by the time you went there? You had some years in the uh, truck. Almost, almost eight. Almost, almost eight years, yeah. yeah. I know. When I got there and I saw Joel O'Donnell and Mike Stackpole that had fucking three years, I was like, what? Like they didn't have three years then, but they got there like three yeah. years before them. I'm like, how the fuck did that? Well, you know how Joe got there, but uh, and Stack, you know, great guys. But I, you know, I could have done that. I could have went earlier, but I didn't know. What did I know? You know what? It was the right time. It I, worked I, I out. A lot of, yeah, yeah. A lot of buildings down at Coney Island. You know, we were second to a lot, but there's so many different kind of buildings down there. I actually learned a lot down there, and I wasn't ready yet. And I felt like I was ready to go when once eight years once is I had a perfect time. Bro. time. That's a yeah. good time. Yeah, that's a good yeah, time to go. Perfect time. <clears throat> so who who who's there when you get there? Give me some of the guys that are there. 
man, you won't even know their names, probably. Jimmy Brogan was a senior guy. He was one of the original members. Billy Alan White. Paso, uh, John um, Hindle. Uh, Timmy Rogers. Bobby West. Bobby West. That was the other Mike Billy Russo. West. Uh, who the fuck else is there? Um, they have the old. They have the Mac when you were there. When you got there, it had to be right. They had the uh, Mac. No, it was in '92. Seagrave. That fucking thing flew. And uh, I'm trying to think of so many other guys that were there. Well, the younger guys were uh, Dave Fontana, uh, Greg Fagan, Fuckface Fagan. I don't know. You know, fuck <laughs> <laughs> that that was one of my favorite words, man. That just fits perfect. Fuckface, yeah, yeah, fits anybody. Yeah, triple F, triple F, <laughs> Fuckface Fagan. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like yeah, it. It was good, man. He was a good dude. Um, still is. He's still he's still with us. He's still with us. Um, <clears throat> Duke, John Zuzuka, remember Zook? Uh, no. All right, his nickname was the loser. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, who was the who was that guy? It was on in the league. It was a great guy, good fireman, really good fireman, fucking crazy strong. He's a tree guy, so his hands were like crazy. But he could fuck up a fire. Like we'd go someplace, <laughs> it sounds like the hell is breaking out. First two, and we get there, it's a fucking microwave fire. We're like, <laughs> come on, the, bro. He gives it the kavorka, that's why. It's he the, the mush. Yeah, it was the yeah, mush. Yeah, the mush, exactly. The eye. Now, when you got there, you guys were only doing, uh, what, uh, first two boxes and then yeah, 75? Yeah, 25, 25 first two boxes. And the rest was at that time we we didn't have every we didn't go to the we didn't go to the four four, the four five, the four three, the five eight. Did and I the say three the nine already? I said yeah. the three nine and the three nine and the two eight. So we didn't we didn't go to those at all. Right. And then we had like we had like first do squad boxes where we would go on ten seventy five. And then the other ones were all hands down for We'd go. Let me ask so, you, wh wh when did you get to use this interesting tool? <clears throat> that's my axe, man. That's, <laughs> everybody, everybody had to take a picture with something, you know, other than actual fire tools. So I, I picked my axe. Badass. That. What, 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 what guitar was that anyway? It was a Jackson, right? That's a Jackson, yeah. Yeah, but what did you do? Way above my league, but I was in a rock and roll band, so I had it, you know, in the oh, 80s, yeah. and 90s, you know. Oh, yeah. Was it a V? What was that? No, no. Uh, I got it here. No, it's a regular. It's, it looks like a Strat. Kind oh, of. nice. Nice, man. Yeah. Awesome. I still have it. Strat, I still have Jackson there, Coops. Oh, it's the Jackson. <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. Is that like the, the 17, the 15, to the 9? He was holding that the whole time. <clears throat> Couldn't wait to get that one out. <clears throat> no. Yeah, yeah, oh, you mean yeah, that's yeah. the slide with the 19 and the yeah. Jackson? Yeah. yeah. Oh, 19, 19, uh, 19 and look, you could have did too. If you, like, if, you, if you blew that up, it says Jackson on a headstock. So oh, it does? Ah, ah, yeah. he, 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 he there it out. is. Well, it's a little it's fuzzy, but it looks like a right. Jackson. Fuzzy there you go. All right. All right, nice. give me that picture up there with the fire coming out of the 82 windows where they're hanging out on the fucking porch there. Man. Give us a story about this one. Not much was, fire there, huh? Yeah, not much. But I, we were in there. We, we came out of there. So the fire, it, it ended up there was it was a private dwelling in Sheepshead Bay. And you couldn't see the FI wasn't there, obviously, when we pulled up. But they, they were having trouble getting up the stairs. And it was bogged down in the rear in the kitchen. So we went in through those windows. And uh, Mike Radigan, whose head is smoking in the picture. Oh shit. Yeah. Oh right? shit. That, that. And and that's because and that's because I'm I'm the one kneeling down next to him there with my face to the camera. Somebody else is going down a ladder. But Mike Ingram, who was in with us, Mike and Mike, they they were unbelievable together he had already gone down a ladder and he yells up to mike ratting he goes hey hey mike and the fire was already blowing out the window like that he goes dude I, I left my hook in the window there right <laughs> right to the left he goes could you reach in there and get it and fucking mike goes okay and he goes up and fucking reaches in richie howe is the chief he's fucking screaming already for us to get off the roof then he sees mike over and reach in <laughs> and get the hook and toss it down to mike he was like you guys get off we're trying to convince him to give us a line to put a let, bring a line up here and we can go we were just in there we know the whole layout in there because the fire was coming we just kept taking doors off we took one door off 
and uh, Mike Radigan's holding it. I'm going to look for other doors. I take another door. I give it to him because it's starting to burn through the sides. Now it's still going, and they're searching. They search a couple of rooms. I go for another door, and all I can find is a hollow color door. Well, I didn't think it will last. <laughs> so I give that to Mike, and he, he puts it on the door, and the fucking thing explodes in flame. And we're like, all right, it's time to go. And that, that's what chased us out all the way to the front. Like that. Those so doors have was, like 16 coats of poly on them. Yeah. Mm. Is it yeah, just... exploded? I've never seen anything like that. It. It literally just like explode. The whole top of the door just exploded. It was useless to even put it there. But... Yeah. Is it uh, Mount Ma- Ma- Malino coming down the uh does the ladder there? What's yeah, I don't know. He, I, he might have been from uh, 153 truck because I think okay. the boss uh, is from 153. Next, yeah. next to us. There. Wow. Right, I can't. Right I again. never. Go ahead. Look. Yeah, cool. uh, go ahead. Uh, I, I've just never seen a helmet smoke before like that. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> when, uh, I used to like, when Mike was in four, I used to like to, when I used to see him over there. Good, yeah, man. good guy, bro. Good yeah. guy. Fucking Always awesome, good awesome, awesome fireman, man. Wasn't Always he the guy at a yeah. job? He He's was actually, before. that fucking guy is a rock star. Oh! Hey, oh, shit. hey come on, man. Look at you. He catches on quick, bro. He knows the whole thing. He needs a drink. Was it uh, Radigan? Uh, didn't he have a job where he was on the floor above and he actually, uh, I forget what job this was. Uh, He's made was, a couple of grabs. It was a job that went sideways, man. And he was on the floor above and he actually um, was able to tell them. Uh, I can't remember the story oh, no. now, bro. He was the, he was the, he was the roof man. I don't <clears> want to get He was the roof man at the Martinson fire. Okay. All right. And he was, uh, he was able to see and, and guide guys from up above. So he, he did a great job. Uh, He's been, yeah. Uh, he, He's, he's a squared away dude, man. Yeah. yeah, man. He's he is totally 100 percent So we didn't do good here, is what you're saying. Huh? We didn't do too good at this one. This one? Well, it was <laughs> it was going right, but what I you know what it was? It was a two-story extension <clears throat> in the back that nobody could see because uh, it was all on fire. I guess the guy didn't go around the rear, so nobody really knew it was there. And right. it was going from the first floor. <clears throat> Through yeah, the second yeah. floor and out out the roof, so you weren't putting an inch and three quarter yeah. wasn't wasn't yeah. doing it. Yeah. yeah, and this is the well, same one right here. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. funny funny story about that is I know the captain and of of the engine that was doing it, and when I came out, I said to him, "Nice stop." So <laughs> <laughs> he, he was he wasn't happy. <clears throat> the guy salt to the earth. One or three guy, really really good guy, but he was definitely was not yeah. happy. Fast forward, I get. Uh, I get promoted, and I'm working a vacation in 169. No which shit, that's hilarious. My my first 1075 I gave as an officer. It was it was a fully involved building. So, nice stop, kid. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So then, so then the next day we we're in the kitchen. I, I actually did a little sock faux pas, even though I was out of sock. I I got my guys together, and anybody else just listening to this, any new lieutenants and stuff. Just think back to where you came from because I fucking forgot about the whole double company thing. And I got my guys all together. I had a couple of guys tap out. I grabbed, I had a guy on the engine. I grabbed him. I get myself, you know, they, they want to put a towel ladder in front to mop up. So I get my guys, hey, pull the rig. And we're going to get out of here. So I get them out of there. I forgot about the engine. And then when the engine <clears> came back, <throat> I know all these guys. I work there in Coney Island. So the fucking chauffeur comes in and slams the fucking door. He goes, you fucking left me there <laughs> to pick up every fucking piece of oh, money. My oh, boss oh, fucking oh, tapped oh, out. You grab one guy and the other two guys tapped out. I'm the only guy left. I had to fucking pick up my mile hose, you motherfucker. It's a double company. I'm like, <laughs> oh, uh, shit. You're right. Bro. I'm, 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 I couldn't. What could I do? I was. It was a total dick move, you know. I didn't. But I didn't know. I was. You know. I was thinking. I'm doing a good thing, but right. you know, lesson learned. So who comes in next day? The captain. <laughs> so now he's like, "You'll never work in my engine." I'm like, "All right, Cap. I understand. I'm sorry." You know. Now we're eating lunch, right? We're sitting at the table. He's sitting across from me, and on the bulletin board is that fucking picture. They have it. On really. The so he's eating lunch with me and i'm like hey hey mike isn't that isn't that the fucking fly we were at <laughs> I, I still think that was a great stop oh. 
<laughs> needless, needless to say, though, I, I was barking in the engine a bunch of times. He just he started cracking up. It was, it was good. Night. That's fucking great. What are the good scary fucking squad one stories you got? Who the bosses had... there, Huey, when you were there? <clears throat> Where squad? Yeah, who were the guys that you started with? To you know, when I first got there, uh, Jimmy Ellison, senior, he brought me over. Great guy, just like every typical sock boss, though not the greatest administrator in the world. I, I walk in in the morning, <laughs> first day that I start there, I said, "Cap, I'm here today." He goes, "Oh, you work today?" <laughs> <laughs> you got a party. I already got six guys. I'm like, oh boy, oh holy boy. shit! That's funny. somebody took a fly when I, I worked today, so it, it was it all worked out good. But he was he was a captain. Uh, Mike mm-hmm. Espo, Mike Esposito mm-hmm. uh, was a lieutenant. Then Larry Gray. Oh man, yeah. and then uh, but I really didn't work with Larry. He was they were he was trying to get out of there. Phil Ruvalo was the other lieutenant, and he was about to get promoted. So I really didn't work with him. So he, because he was at the Rock, I think with Reich, Weishait, they were setting up the whole trail thing in the back. It was right around that time. So I had a bunch of covering bosses. Dennis Farrell was covering there a lot. Unbelievable, unbelievable officer. And then uh, Eddie Diatri. Oh yeah. man, crazy, yeah, we talk crazy, about him. Guy. We talk we crazy. about him all the time. Actually, crazy. Louis, Louis Montefiore. <laughs> Uh, got the spot, got Ruvalo's spot, and I think Eddie ended up getting uh, Larry Gray's spot, or or vice versa. Anyway, but when when Eddie came in, you guys know Eddie, right? Eddie yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy. We we had some funny stories with him too. Yeah, crazy. Dude, guy. that guy. I mean, he was. He's the guy. He's like Glenn Harris, you know. And they're in the same. Yeah, you same want him rap. coming for you? Yeah, he's in your like, top. He's three. crazy, crazy, crazy. But if you're in trouble. You want him That's coming the guy you want to come yeah, from. Yeah, he yeah, literally, yeah. I mean, you know the story. He burnt his hands, right? Trying to get a guy out in, in Manhattan. Trying yeah. to get, you know, he had the line back here, but he had leather gloves on. So he, he ended up fucking burning his hands really bad. But that didn't slow him down. At all. Dude, that guy was no. a beast. He was jacked. Beast. I mean, jacked. Beast, but he was really easy. He was so easy, man. We used to, we used to do some side work together. And we were on a roof. And he's saying, yeah, we don't got to snap any lines. We'll just do it by it. He goes, I'm my eye. It's perfect. We're gonna get it. <laughs> so we do about we do about 10, 10 rows and we're down at the bottom. Me and my buddy Tony Edwards. You guys remember Tony Edwards? He was a squad one guy, one of my best friends. We look up and it, it goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what the fuck, bro? You just want to oh, What's going shit. On? The eyes, what happened to the eyes? We'll, we'll, we'll cheat it. We'll cheat it up. We'll cheat it up. We'll cheat it up. So, so we finished, but all three of us go to work that night, all right? So after roll call, we're in the back. Fucking Eddie's yelling about something, and Tony Edwards goes, Oh, Oh, Lieutenant Chalkline, take it easy. <laughs> oh, I thought he was going to fucking oh, kill somebody. Man. It was funny. Didn't he get yeah. burnt a bunch of times, bro? And they told him if he got yeah, burnt he again, got, he, he got was going to. He got burnt uh, Vandalia. He got burnt again. But, you know, he just kept going. Man, he was he was crazy. That guy had a pony bottle and a set of irons in his truck. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I think no I remember surprise. him saying something about carrying two hoods, like some crazy two shit. Two hoods, like, yeah. It was the two yeah. hood groups. You know, you yeah. got you got yeah. the dead zone. You got these. You got yeah, you got two hood mind. groups. Eddie yeah. was the, the two hood guy, man. If you if it gets too hot, you can put another one on and go a little yeah. further. Holy shit. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. He, he, he doesn't even doesn't hard charge. It doesn't even define that guy, bro. Yeah. It's insane. Well, wow, now you're trying to fucking cut <clears throat> again, right? No, no, no. We're gonna we're gonna play. I think it's we're gonna throw a little music on maybe one time here. Another song coming up. Yeah. All right. I just All wanted right. to ask you about this photo. Is this 9-11? Yeah, that's that's 9-11. We uh we found a rig and I can't really see it if Joel O'Donnell's name is on there, but we wrote all the guys' names on there, including Joe, because we thought he was working and we, we couldn't find him. And then later on we found Joe, so then we crossed his crossed his name out. Oh, but yeah, all the guys, all the guys that we lost, the names are, are on that rig. Crazy, so, yeah, crazy. Where, where where did they go on? Did they go on the uh, the initial? Uh, was that a ten sixty? Yeah. What well, when did they go? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure <clears throat> what they what they went on. Uh, I'm sure it had to be 
pretty close to right away. And, right. You know, something like that happens. They took off. Even if they weren't a sign, I think they were going. So, yeah. But the whole day tour, night tour, everybody jumped on the rig. Eddie went by himself. Stevie Seller went by himself. So, you know, we know the result. Yep. Your, your son's in the chat. My son? Which one? Odin. What is he saying? Anything good? He's just no. saying, uh, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> your son's name is Odin? Uh, uh, I, I, before, I heard you saying about <clears throat> or anything. He's actually, he is a producer now. Oh! He's an associate producer. At I'm going to get the, send the card. Send oh. the card in. Yeah, yeah. Look at Pete. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> He'll turn you down right when he finds out what the pay rate is. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Right, what'd you want to what'd you want to play, Ruffy? So, uh, a live one or one that you had in the tapes there? No, no, throw a live one on, kid. All right, Did give me one. Yeah. yeah, bro. All right. Don't make me cry though. Don't make me cry. No, 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 no crying. Which one is this? No crying. I was gonna I was gonna do a song to make everybody cry, but I'm tired of being the funeral. You know how uh you have the wedding singer? I was yeah. I was the fucking funeral singer, bro. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's no good. No yeah, news. no more. No more. I don't you know. People like, you know, crying. No. He's got a tune. Me, 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 me. So I think at some point in everybody's career, you feel like a young gun, right? I like it. Yeah. Feel like you want to charge into the building and get it done. So this is for everybody.
of life. And I walk these streets with only six string on my back. And I play for keeps. Cause I might not make it back. I've been everywhere, yeah. And I'm standing tall. And I've seen a million faces. And I've rocked them all. So the cowboy. On a steel horse I ride. One and one and did all the life. Yeah, I'm a cowboy. I got the night on my side. That is a great Dude, song, right? You've come a long way. You've come a long way from the skull duggery. I can tell you that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great uh, sweet. Wow, man. You must enjoy awesome. doing that shit, huh? Q? That must be a lot of fun huh? when you go to the bars. When you go to the bar, it must be a lot of fun doing that. It's great, man. It's great. Three hours. Well, I wish I could sing for Christ's they sake. Before, have a couple of drinks, have a lot of laughs. It's good. No, it's good stuff. Man. And it's not just good the singing, deal. Coops. It's singing and playing together. Holy shit. Hell man. yeah, man. I could eke out a couple of tunes, but I can uh, sing it and playing. No way. Do you, the uh, Johnson? What do they call uh, it? The, uh, <laughs> the Jackson. The, the Jackson. The jo <laughs> now, I play the Johnson really well, bro. I, am an, uh, I play the Johnson excellent. Right next to the <laughs> with the Johnson is uh, very Every important. day. Every goddamn day I play the Johnson. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Come on, uh, every show, would you? Yo, dude, do you still play the drums too? Like, uh, yeah, up until a little while ago, I had to put them away because uh, I got all my kids came back, so they're all living here, so we were kind of running out of room a little bit. My granddaughter wow. just turned uh, one yesterday. Beautiful, nice. Salute, salute. nice, nice to be a grandpappy, huh, bro? Yeah, that's great, that's great. Well, sugar exactly. them up, send them back. I think I screwed my kids up, but hopefully I'm doing a better job. <laughs> Good thing you get a second chance with the grandkids, you know? Yeah, no, awesome. it's great. It really is. I did want to ask you, bro, uh, in uh, 98, when the squads came about, what was the general feeling inside squad one about, you know, the new squads coming online? Well, you know, actually – about six months before that happened, we got everything. Remember I said we didn't go to all the battalions and we right, had to right, yeah. wait for, you know, uh, all hands doubtful to go. We had everything. In fact, I wish I had the hat. It was a pretty famous hat that we did just to piss off, you know, Rescue 2. We had uh, all the work, half the attitude. We had it. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Allion, my, you know, well, his I little remember. yellow friends. It, it was fun. But that ended six months and you guys came. Well, what am I going to say? You know, uh, we weren't happy, obviously, because, you know. 252 took half your boxes, right? The only one, you know, so there was a little friction. But, you know, in the end, everybody's great. We had, you know, we had a great time with everybody. So. You were so telling like, weren't you teaching the original, at the original school, ropes? Were you teaching ropes at the original school? Uh, no. No, it wasn't you? Nah, I stayed away. Joel Donnelly grabbed me <clears throat> and got me got me into it. And then I then I never turned back. But before that, I was you know I was new and I didn't want to like go there and do that. I was still learning myself. So right, I don't so want to be that guy. You know, what I mean, I don't want to be the guy that's standing there that you know I just looked in a manual and figured out how right. to do it. Yeah, 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 no doubt. Throw it out there. So, so but that six months that you guys had the you know the whole borough, was there any friction with two or was it mostly no? Nah. Yeah. Nah. Nah, and friction with two is fun. It was all it was all fun. Man. We had, you know, right. we loved those. Those guys are great guys. Back then too, they were they were unbelievable. You know, they believed me. They had they had enough 
they didn't even think about us. Yeah, there's more than oh, five. If, if you're thinking about the other company, you're not doing what you should be doing. Right. You, know? you can't really be bothered with any of that stuff. Right. Was there certain areas? I'm sure there was because you guys geographically are separated. So there's certain boxes you would get in before they would, right? And vice versa. Yeah, actually, oh, 147. I was just going to say 147, 157, 113. Yeah, That's where and, you would and, catch and, you know, Sunset Park slowed down a little bit, but you know when they were when they 114 was in their prime I, I i missed kind of that but they were they were down that way all the time and there was nobody that, I wasn't yeah, coming over the bridge you know so they had, they had a lot of fun no, they they could, you could great, sneak it great, to 147 yeah, yeah. Well, so when did that come about where five took the boxes that were right over the verrazano in brooklyn and did that affect uh, you guys too or you just uh, you were going to the same boxes no nah, yeah it didn't it actually we gained that's it Somewhere along that line, we might start going to the four three with five. So I'm not sure the whole timeline of that, but um, probably somewhere around the time when uh, the squads were formed, maybe maybe a little bit before that. Right. But so. that that has that was uh, a... you know Coney Island is so far away though. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's so far. Had some of my best runs though driving down there. Sometimes you know, who, Louis, did you drive? I did. How about you, Coops? You drive? He did. He yeah. was my chauffeur. Yeah. yeah. That's like, uh, that's the best, I think, squad position aside from being an alpha man all the time. You know, squad chauffeur. Like, I tell all the time. Chauffeur. Yeah. That was actually a big point of contention, a bone of contention with me when I was going to get promoted because I had 19 years. I was leaving. I was already at the Rock. I was trying to square root a deal. John Hopkins again told me to go out there and then maybe when I get promoted, I could stay, you know, you're always trying to stay. It's a good, good place to be. Sock. You don't want to yeah. leave. Uh, so, you know, it didn't quite work out. I got promoted. And then, uh, I mean, you look Peters at the, the squad. The time, <clears throat> I got out of flips and he was the XO. So Cassano was like, yeah, well, you're not having two guys go straight back to the school. So, right. I got kicked out. I got. I got. Ended up going into uh, to the two three battalion and to the eighth division, which was great. Uh, you know, in retrospect, you should definitely be out in the field to learn how to be a lieutenant. Absolutely, you know, absolutely, one hundred percent. You know, but when you're in sock, you want to stay. So I was, you know, trying to do it. But in retrospect, it was a great thing just to be out there doing that. So, and you were yeah, living Staten Island, so you were you were traveling. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a pretty good hike to yeah. squad one, isn't it? Squad one, yeah. It could take me, uh, you know, two hours to get there. That's crazy, isn't it? Wow. Crazy. <laughs> I broke a lot of traffic laws to get there. I was going to say, what is it, like 20 miles? What is it? Not even 20 Eight, miles. I think it? it's 18. Yeah. 18 miles. <laughs> yeah. Two wow. hours. Can you imagine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Try, try working in Rescue 4. Oh, yeah. I Well, we had da Donnie Campbell was in five with you. And uh, Donnie was coming to 288 and I, I i finally i love donnie i had to tell him i'm like listen bro you can't you can't come here anymore you gotta i'll, I'll make a i'll make a phone call for you i'll talk to some people you got to start the, the process you got to get out of here you know you can't yeah, he was no, trapped, but, and they were doing the kosciuszko bridge at the time it was taking them three hours to get to fucking yeah, work yeah but you know what yeah. you know my whole career really I, until the very end i didn't do anything as far as you know how long it was going to take me it's, when you got there it was great rescue yeah. four was awesome I bounced there a lot when they were in with 316. I was having a lot of fun. Oh, that was, that was a good spot. That was That's a good. great spot for them, bro. A little, little rough in the rain and the snow, and the whole thing was yeah, leaking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, you had to go to the rig with an umbrella. But it, I remember it, we it went was, there with the rig a few times coming back from a run. I think they were doing the boots or something. We stopped in there when you had the uh, the metal uh, shed. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun, though. Great. You, great. Ca you, ca you catch any work out in G Pop when you're out? Yeah, actually, it's very funny. Every time I went, you know, when there's no room at the end, you're out, right? In sock, January, December, there's no vacations. People are so, you're out. But they, they would hold you to the very end. And you guys know this. Lou, you know this, right? So you're going to a spot where maybe nobody wanted to go, right? So, But when you get there, it's a gem, you know? People are yeah. crazy. Yeah, I found firehouses all over the city. Maybe they're not doing so much work, but they're awesome. The guys will yeah, yeah, fucking do Absolutely. anything for you. They trip over themselves trying to do stuff for you. But every time I went to the first division, I caught a job. Really? Every single time. Seven engine, 
15 engine, uh, four engine. As long as you're going up. That. You're going up, huh? it's all right. If ah, you're going no up. Sellers, no subsellers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No, no sellers. I've had my share of sellers. Yeah. Yeah. No, the, the triple no, they're all, they're actually all that. small. They were actually all small fires, but it was just funny because every time I went there, I, I'd do something. Yeah, yeah. Fire any, <clears throat> before you went back to sock, were there any places that you're like, yeah, I, I think I could see myself maybe staying here? 80 truck was a great spot. Oh, that was like one of those places where they had a lot of guys with time that came from uh, busy companies. And it was a nice, beautiful firehouse. They just they had just done it over when I was there. The guys are great. Is that the, the hot corner? There. No, it's Cougar Country. Oh, gosh. Oh, all right. <laughs> the cool yeah, curve. That's not, that's not, that's not, uh, P. used to tell him it was uh, uh, the 111 of Staten Island. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> just, all right. Just, just to twist them up, just to twist them up. But really, if they took that firehouse and put it in a, in a busy area somewhere, they would dynamite. They would dynamite. I, I really liked working there. But so then, much. strangely, you're going to ask me how I got back to sock. I show well, up. It was just coming out of my mouth, bro. It was just coming out. Yeah, I show up for a 24, and there's a guy sitting there, and I'm like, you're up. He's like, I'm up, because I just got hired for 24. What are you talking about? I'm up. I said, well, it's my tour. He goes, well, I don't know. They said the guy went back to sock. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Look at his face. He's like, well, so, no. Oh, hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> I get on the phone. I called Freddie Lafamina, who's the chief. I'm like, hey, uh. Freddie, the guy here is telling me I went back to sock. He goes, oh, yeah. Nobody called you? I'm like, no. Yeah. Is that Freddie's name? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anytime you mention Freddie, you got to play that song. That's good. He goes, oh, you know, you know the way things are. <laughs> I tell you, I would love to have you back. We love to have you back. No. He goes, yeah, Dave Marvin just tapped out. He goes, Go to 270 tonight and do his medical leave. And that was it. That oh, was bad. Sure. That's awesome. Yeah, no one even called me. I was like, all right, whatever. But what year was that? Around? What uh, was that? That was uh, 2008. Yeah, because I came back around that time myself, I think. I went to the rescue school. I think 2008. You didn't have to do any penance? You didn't have to go down to the rescue school? Nothing like that? Why? I had uh, time served. So I was oh. there. I was there before uh, before I got promoted. I did a little. I told you, John Hopkins uh, went out there, so uh, it was nice. But you know what? They started. I didn't know. And I think, oh, this is great. I got time served. But then they started rotating guys in for a month at a time. You had to go either do MTT or you had to run the office. So right. I was on that rotation. Always good though. You know what? The Rock is a good place. You, you see everybody. You're involved with all the training. All the time, so it's it's a good spot. Yeah. Who well, said right that? Here. Higgins. Higgins <clears throat> said that, right? Uh, Joe Higgins said that. Like a lot of times, you don't realize when you go to these things. Sometimes you get this bad, you know, outlook, and in the end, it turns out to be like a blessing in disguise. You know, you got you know, you're working there a couple of days a week, and uh, you know, you're doing your four tens, and uh, allegedly, you know, and, yeah, well, but you meet a lot of people, and you have a good time. It's good. Yeah, I mean, years ago, Make it work rock, for you. you know, the old rock didn't have a great rep. You know what I mean? A lot of guys just went there to retire. and But now it's a totally, totally, yeah. totally yep. different place, man. Totally different. So, any other spots yeah, that you thought about? Did you put in for any other spots before you got the uh, spot in five? Yeah, I put in for squad one a couple of times. My buddy Jack Flatley told me, you know, I'm too close. Step back. Oh, uh, so one of those. That, and I put it for two a couple of times, but I wasn't the guy. You're not the guy. You're not the guy. You know what I mean? All uh, works out like spot. I put it for rescue one. Me and Billy uh, Billy Ryan battled it out. And uh, but it was right around that time that things were moving. Mm -hmm. So I saw the light of day, and we all ended up where we were supposed to end up. Billy went to one. I went to five. How far is that was, from the house? One? No, oh, five. A oh, five? <laughs> I don't know. Fifteen minutes? <laughs> wow. It's on the other side of the island, but it's it's yeah, not if you hit the four the four stoplights after you get off the yeah, if, if, if you hit the red light, it's fifteen so I, minutes. I had I had the realization uh my youngest guy had a 
some fractures in his lower, his lower back from running. It was a little weird thing. So he had to do PT. So it was freezing out. I was supposed to drop him there and go to work, but it was like 18 degrees out. So he's done. And I'm like, all right, I'll drive you home. So I call up Joe Light's work. And I'm like, Joe, I'm going to be a few minutes late. Drive him home. I get back. I'm there. I'm, I'm still there at 10 after 5. I'm like, and at that moment, I said, what the fuck was I thinking? Why was yeah. I going into Manhattan <clears throat> every day? I loved it. I loved the guys. I loved going there. It was a totally different perspective from when I was a fireman and when you're working there and rescue one as a boss. It was great. You know what I mean? There's so much going on. You know, I learned a lot of stuff. But like I said, it all works out the way it's supposed to. I ended up in five, and that was the best thing ever. Oh, yeah. That's a home run, man. Yeah. I miss that, I miss that place so much, man. I missed, you know, obviously we went to fires not as many as others but just every day going there and being with the guys and i'm just driving around with jojo more than anything else we got some pictures of rescue five there Petey. yes we do uh is, is joe white still on the job or is he out now yeah joe's up well as far as i know i haven't talked to him in a while but he's up in uh he's up in three all right he went up to three well, firstly, right? let's go through this one that is the heavy rescue <laughs> I'm yeah, always you ain't, you ain't kidding, bro. What yeah, you? man. Uh, Mike Golden on the end was an attack, so he doesn't really count as the heavy rescue, but he did add a few pounds. He was in one of three with me, Mike. If if everybody, if you add up all, I was the lightest guy in that group. <laughs> I think we we added everybody's weight up, and it came to like nineteen hundred and ninety wow. seven pounds. Oh my right. god, you fat bastards! Yeah, and so. uh Roger, Roger Sackowitz, Chief Sackowitz, was in the eighth that day, and he was he was there when we were doing it. And he's like, "No, what you are not allowed to be in the same room uh, at all, <laughs> all day." Compromise the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we go we go to a job. Uh, this picture's we had a, a giant Queen Anne with a huge wrap around porch that went around the whole entire building, and he actually ordered us off of the porch roof he was like rescue get off of that roof right now i want one guy from another company rescue you come down here right now he was, he was afraid and, eat a, and eat a carrot yeah well, <laughs> but then here I, I spade would have it we go we get another job right after that in coney island in a high rise up on like the 18th floor so we're up there doing our thing but it's really not not much going on and then Somebody, whoever the chauffeur was, gets on and says, eh, I think it was JoJo actually. He goes, Yeah, we got another box. It sounds good. So we run out and we all get into the same elevator. <laughs> I mean, we cram in there. You couldn't, like, we had to pull the last guy in and the door <laughs> fucking it, slides yeah, over. We're all up. looking at each other like, <clears throat> This, this not ain't gonna good. go. It's not gonna move. The, uh, it moved. It, it moved. Did. It dropped and then stopped totally. And we're like, oh, fuck, what are we going to do now? <laughs> you Obviously, you know, as a, a rescue company or a squad company, you don't want to call the squad or the rescue to yep. come get you out of the elevator. That would have been the worst. Yeah, they wouldn't have got us out of anyway because they had the same box. They were already down, probably running down the stairs. <laughs> they weren't going to get us. But actually, the elevator started moving and we made it, but it was so funny. We were sitting in the air. We couldn't even move <clears throat> and the thing stopped. We were like, we can't even force our way out of here because we can't lift our arms. <laughs> <laughs> All right. How about these photos? That's actually off of a, a video uh, before 9-11. I forget the uh, the name of the show. Somebody out there is going to know what it is. They they were following around the fire department. They, had, uh, they were riding with Rescue 2 for a couple of weeks. And that night, this was like the fifth job that we had that night. It was a great night. Usually when somebody rides with a company – it's yeah, terrible. You don't do shit, right? Yeah, yeah. It was the, the bravest awesome. was the the job, and it was ripping. That job was the fifth job, and it was also the second time we were at that job. So I'm not saying rekindle, but allegedly, the second one, allegedly. second one was better than the first one. <laughs> That's always a nice thing. That's the same job. I had the keys to the city, and there I am with uh, the saw. I know I'll probably get flack for no gloves, you know, but. Uh, Got busy. You were working. Oh, shit. I police. was working. I was working. There's my uh, sad frown face that I had on the side of my helmet for years. Still on there, but you can't see it now because it's burned destroyed. off. 
yeah, pretty much. No, he's a horse so, you guys, you guys know, like uh, I got those horses. guys can't recognize what you look like in the dark, but your guys, you know, even in the thickest smoke, right? You yeah, come yeah, up behind you one of your guys, know. Yeah, you, yeah. you know, you know who it is. You, you know yeah. the silhouette, and that you was a little thing on helmet. the helmet. Yeah, 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 you could tell the helmet. So I got to ask you. Have you ever wanted to be a cowboy? What's going on with this photo? <laughs> he just sang so we about it, didn't he? No, we were in squad when we were about a, uh, <clears throat> a couple of blocks from uh, Prospect Park. Right. So we, we used to go there for lunch. We'd go, we'd buy sandwiches and sit out when it was nice out. And there was the parks department had uh, a couple of girls that had horses. So they decided to leave the park and come down and visit us at the firehouse. So. Oh, no, you don't. Why? Why no, wouldn't I get on the horse? Yep. You know, there's another picture. Of, uh, you guys don't have it. I can't find it, but I got my helmet. Is that on. a uh, did, did, did the job give you that shirt there, uh, Hugh? Huh? <laughs> job issued shirt. Yeah. <laughs> <job issued shirt. laughs> my my huge arms were busting out. Of shirt. <laughs> I had to cut the sleeve. Of course, that's what we did. Tell did us they... about uh, some of this uh, training. It looks <clears> like. <throat> Oh, that was uh, for the wheel. The trolley? Is that the, the wheel? Oh, that no. was the. Uh... <laughs> that was uh, that was in Vegas. We had uh, we were supposed to, we were tasked with coming up with a rescue plan for the giant wheel that was supposed to go in Staten Island. So we we're looking all over. We wanted to go to uh, who has it? Um, Seoul, somebody, some other place. You're trying to get them to go, but we ended up going to Las Vegas and working with the Las Vegas PD. That actually is Saudi Arabia. Oh. It did training uh, with Joe O'Donnell, and uh, we taught in Saudi Arabia. There's uh, desalinization plants. Oh. There's 26 of them throughout Saudi Arabia, and they all had their own fire department. And they had a couple of guys die, maintenance guys die in these tubes, you know, high up elevation tubes that they have to clean out. So one of the guys, they're very into training. They had come. They had learn all the OSHA rules and he wanted to have training for the guys that could be OSHA approved. And me and Joe Donald went out there. We were out there for eight weeks and we taught a bunch of guys uh, rope rescue. Nice, nice package. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> a nice package there, Yui. Nice. Oh, yeah. Awesome. That's the package enhancer. Yeah. The package enhancer. <laughs> not, not as good as the body harness, but that's, uh, you know. <clears throat> How about Mama Lynch there, Petey? Yep. Classic. That's it. It's uh -huh. my mom. She rode that day. She, she rode. Walked. I took. I went in the back step. And she rode. She did a better <laughs> job than I did. <laughs> How old is mom, bro? Mom is now at eighty-eight. Nice. Wow. Good for still her. Cooking. Still, still going strong. She boils a good meat, right? Those Irish. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. That's what I said. I didn't know what a head of garlic was. You know, when I got to the fire. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't know what spice. I thought salt and pepper was spices. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where were you here? I was squad one. All right. Old there was a here. young girl around the corner who used to like to come by and take pictures. Ah. Hmm. Ah. Did you take some pictures of her? No, no. <laughs> who, uh, Donnie, who were some of the guys, uh, who were the bosses there when you got there in five at the time? Uh, uh, what, when I when I first got there? It's Jimmy yeah. Murray, Joe Where Light. Joe Light was there already, huh? Yeah. Uh, who the fuck was the fucking fourth guy? Oh, Sal. <laughs> Sal, Sal through, through the pillow. Through the pillow. <laughs> I'm going to go to the parking lot and I'm going to flip my tire and break my chains. <laughs> the best look I ever got, Ron Daly comes as a detail one time, right? From Rescue 4. And I'm sitting in the office and he comes up to say hello. And he's talking to me and all of a sudden his eyes go like this and he's like, he's like what, the, what the fuck is going on out there? I turn around and sounds out there. He's got Fucking two boat chains. Oh, he's doing the boat chain doing crawl? His, doing his workout. Oh dragging his giant boat chains across the parking lot. <laughs> and he's flipping his fucking fire <laughs> that's bigger than him over. The guy was 60-something years old. He's still he's still in crazy no, shape. shape. Yeah, that's Incredible. crazy, man. Incredible. That's so Maniac. Fun. Good dude. Good dude, Sal. Yeah, man. 
Any okay. any uh, any other rescue five stories you want to tell before we sing some songs and do the old school tip of the day? Uh, let's see. Any good uh, dive jobs? Any? Uh, no, no, no. Actually, uh, I, the funny the funny thing is, I was in rescue one UFO for like ten months, right? And you do the typical scaffolding, or you know, all, all the. I went to man, more. Man on the <laughs> I went to more technical rescues yeah. in Staten Island than I did when I was oh, in. Shit, really? the only no. guys. You know anyone? Yeah, yeah, the yeah, only yeah. ones there. One in particular, guys did a great job. I fucked up. I didn't put in for a unit, but we were actually having lunch in a restaurant underneath the Bayonne Bridge. The done. We start driving away, and as we drive away, the, the computer goes blink. I'm, like, I'm reading the ticket. I'm like. Joey's driving. I'm like, bro, something going on in the bridge right here. We literally banged the right and came around and, and pulled up next to the ramp. Because, you know, Port Authority is supposed to do the whole wait. You know, there's another there's another box that we're supposed to wait in, but we were right there. So we pulled in. Port Authority cop comes flying up the ramp, steps on the brake, rolls the window down, and does one of these. So we're like, uh-oh, something's going on. They were taking it. It was when they rebuilt it. Right, they they used the old arch to rebuild the bridge. So now that was built, and now they were taken apart the other bridge. And this guy had uh, he was right at the edge, and they were chipping with a machine, and it knocked over a jersey barrier onto his leg, crushed him. He was dying. His his guys tied a rope around him, but he was still bleeding out. My guys went tied uh, tourniquets on him. We packaged them. It's one of those things, right? You you never use anything but rope, right? You don't use anybody else's equipment. But I'm there, and they have all these lifts, giant lifts, and I happen to know the construction manager. That'd be a friend of uh, a friend of mine's brother, and I said to him, I'm "Like, bro, we had all the rope set up, all ready to go." I'm like, "Are those reliable?" And he goes, "Absolutely. We use them every single day. Go up and down." I said, "You got a guy that can." really run that he goes my best guy he's right here it's all right and that's what we did we actually put him up in the man basket but you know we had him all hooked up i had my guy that would have been the craziest most legitimate roof rescue i mean rope rescue in the history of fdny we were all the way up on the bayon bridge it was a windy day it would have been everything that i didn't want to put a guy on rope yeah but yeah, yeah. It, it worked out you know what i mean sometimes you gotta when you're there we you gotta just go with it yeah man did uh the, the guy live? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. lost his leg. He lost his leg, but he lived. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was, and I get up to the chief. I'm like, uh, where, where's squad one? He goes, oh, I, I turned him around. I'm like, why'd you turn him around? He goes, well, it sounded like you had it under control. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. But in the future, it'd be good if you just kept them rolling, just in case. Yeah. So when uh, Squad Ocho came online, uh. <laughs> How was that? Uh, you know, uh, you know I, I knew it was going to take. It's going to take them a few years to really find their niche. Right. So it didn't really didn't really affect me too much or anybody that's there. And they're a great bunch of guys, bro. You know, I live on the South Shore of Staten Island. I know how far away Rescue Five is from here. It's a thirty-minute drive, lights and sirens down Highland Boulevard. You know, so I like that they're here because they're all great guys, man. They right. Really are. The great so guys. they're pretty far away from Rescue Five, then is what you say? They are, yeah. I mean, you know, there's really, if it's a good job, everybody has something to do anyway. If it's not, I'm driving. We were driving all the way out here and turning around anyway. So, it they're, they're a good thing. They're a good thing to have on staff. Yeah, yeah. 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 No. I don't they're, know why it took so long for them to put one over that man. Yeah, I don't know. I have money, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah. always good. trying to figure out where to put it. Now, did they take over an engine company? What did they do there? Was there a yeah, they took over a 154 engine? I had actually told them they should make a truck because there's a lot of trucks out there that I mean, they're not a lot of trucks in that one area where they are, and it would have been great for them. They would have had hardly any first two boxes, and it would have been a truck. What's the difference? Right. You know, yeah, they don't, have to, they don't have to be an engine, it's not written anywhere that you have to be an engine to be a squad. They could have been a truck company, but yeah. All right, Ruffy, you got any questions for Huey Huey before we do the old school tip? No, we could do You want to do the old school tip before we do the music or you want to do the Oh, music? yeah. Let's do the old school tip and then we'll take it out with some jams. 
We'll All jam right. it up. Right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know what time it is. It is time for the old school tip of the day. 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 Take it away, you. All right. The one thing I have to impress upon anybody who's watching, who's a young fireman, and even an old fireman, always, always be ready. Don't be that guy that's going to be waiting. Make sure you're dressed, flaps down, collar up, ready to go. Make sure you got that every time. doesn't matter what run it is. Don't be complacent. Get it done. I like it. Simple. Nice. Short and sweet. Simple, simple, simple. Um, you know, I actually watched a video of uh, a guy drilling to get dressed on the fans page. And I, you know, like you, they were clocking it and, and his guys were like, dude, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And he had it down pat. I'm talking to clipping it, the stuff in and to put it on the hood and the helmet and everything. I couldn't believe it. It was like clockwork. Like he knew where everything was. If he was in the pitch black room, he knew where everything was on his body. So, I mean, is it like that, dude? Like. You're telling guys get in there and even drill putting on your stuff. Not well, you know, I came from a different era, right? I didn't even have bunker gear when I first started. Mm. So it's kind of like you got on the rig and you got dressed when you were on the rig as you were going. All you had to do was put your coat on and, and your helmet on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you get into that whole rhythm. It's like, and it's that's kind of a it's misleading when you watch a guy do that because that's not the way it happens when you're responding. I mean, in all the companies in other parts of the country, you know, you, you may be dressed before you get on the rig, but us, we jump into our pants, throw our radio on, get our coat on, and start going to the rig. Throw the hood on, and, and then you're on the rig, and you button up as, you, as you're going. So it's not really – and I think a lot of guys maybe show up, and they got to get dressed. When I think that's what Huey was meaning. Just be ready to go when you step off the rig 100% yeah. all the time, no matter what the box is. Just be ready yeah. to go. I mean, for the young guys, you know what I mean? I had a pro beam when I was an 80 truck, two of them actually, that were, you know, they were, they were facing the guys in the jump seats through the OV and the roof. And we go to a couple of things, and, and, you know, those guys have time to get dressed. You know what I mean? They're not, they may not be getting dressed, but we got off, and then they didn't have their stuff on that I had on. You know, so I told him, I said, listen, if you see me getting dressed, I get dressed for everything. Every single thing that I go to, I don't care what it is, I get dressed. A few times that I didn't, I got reminded that I should. So I told him that, and literally, I come back the next tour, and one of the probies comes running up to me. He goes, Lou, Lou, Lou. He goes, we had a pull box the other day, and he goes, and I was dressed, and we pulled around the corner, and it was a fire. He goes, I was the, I was the first guy at the door. He goes, I was ready to go. I was there. So, <laughs> you know, it's not a lie. You know what I mean? Nobody made that up. That's that's a definite thing. It was drilled into me, especially when I got yeah. to squad one. You get off the rig, I don't care if it's a gas leak. You got all your stuff on. You're wrapped up and ready to go because then when something does happen, you're ready. They're looking to you, right. Kev always yeah. said that he was, he was you guys at uh, 288. That was your thing. Always, always, always ready to go. Full hood, everything, no matter what it was. Bull box or a microwave fire. So, uh, wait, he, you're, you're muted, Coops. Unmute yourself, dude. I said they used to look at a sideways roof, right? If we got off like a car fire, we're all buttoned up. They would look like we're looking at us like we were nuts. But <clears throat> well, I think even too, like we, we've talked about that. When you get off ice, we used to get off dirt too for gas leak. I mean, I know some boroughs don't do that, and that's that's what they do. That's fine. That's what they do. That's what they do. Well, for you us. know, listen, and to be fair, though, you know, we didn't have to do all the fucking alarm boxes and all that other bullshit. Yeah, yeah. You can't be getting dressed. I'm not saying, I don't care. In the end, you can only control what you do, right? Yeah. I, I'm well, knocking I, everybody. Listen, I, had, I worked one night up uh, in, in not in Sock, up in the Bronx, and uh, great, great company. Really great, hard, heavy hitting company. And I was in the engine. And we go out on a CO run. I'm all, I'm all, you know, gussied up. I get off. I walk over to the building. Truck comes. They go do their thing. I walk back to the rig. And, oh, you know, young guy. He goes, hey, you you know. yeah. Yeah. He goes, you don't you're not, you know, we're kind of, we're basically just like an escort, you know, up here for, for these runs. And I'm like, listen, I'm not here to change what you do. I said, but this is what, what I, I do. do. 
This is mm-hmm. what I do. You do what you do. This is, uh, I do what I do. Uh, that's all. And that's all you can do. Uh, you know, awesome. be ready and uh, but be that guy. Be the guy that's ready. So nice. Yep. All right, Hugo. What do you got for us? Well, this is actually an original tune. Oh, nice. That I wrote as a as a young fireman. I should probably like mute that before I do it. <laughs> now they're like coops. <laughs> wrote this many years ago uh, it's called tomorrow and i think it applies to uh, us as uh, firemen and first responders and, and even the military so give it a listen here we go
Nice man. Great lyrics, bro. That was good. I know. Great lyrics, bro. Awesome. Good stuff. When nice. did you do that one? <clears throat> uh, I was, I don't know, very young, back in the uh, in the early nineties. <laughs> back in the nineties. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen. Back in the early 90s, you know, <laughs> that's what Chief done. The early nineties were uh, the Warriors. So. Uh, oh, like, look at him, bro. He's yeah. done. Bro. Good thing. What he said, he had, his, he had all the war years. That guy, yeah, that guy got in the late 50s, man. Yeah, he saw them all. You yep. go, nice job, brother. Thanks That's an amazing mind, right there. Vinny Dunn, yes, we had him on. Go, go watch, go binge That's watch, cool. brother. I did, I watch, I watch every come on. I told you, I watched. Oh, you did, right? Every, I, you're right. I stand corrected, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ruffy. You got any shout outs tonight besides uh, a couple actually, of our fathers for the uh Rangers? What do you got? Yeah, oh no. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Oh no. Hold on oh, a second. No. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. So um I know. It's been a rough night for, for, uh, for, for the Rangers. Rangers. For, for the, the Rangers. Rangers. For all of us. I'm like so I'm sorry, Lou. Tell us how you God. feel, Lou. Tell us tell us the inner feelings. Tell us where does the anger come from right now? Where is it? I'm not happy. It's it's <laughs> <laughs> what We're player, what player right. can we blame? Move on. Move on. Move on. All right. Who can we blame? Yeah, All moving. right. All right. All right. I have a shout out. This is uh, actually uh, another somber uh, thing here. This was sent to me by uh, Dennis Weimer. I believe that's how you say his last name. Last night, Clara Craigshaw. I hope I'm saying her name right. She's the widow of Bill Craigshaw, firefighter Bill Craigshaw, who died in the Hackensack. Four dealership fire. I believe there was uh, five wow. guys. 1988 passed yeah. away. She just passed away after a long illness. After Bill died, she was a stalwart uh, in education and safety for firefighters. Uh, by her persistence, the city bought, brought about much needed change in equipment and education. Perhaps a mention and a call to stay in touch with those who you have lost. So uh, thank you, Dennis. That was, uh, I get a lot of those things, but that one. Uh, yeah. Stuck we up. also had one from Clee House who sent this. Uh, I sent you that, Ruffy. Uh, uh, evidently, he was in Ladder 103, and he was also a um, fire marshal. Russ Bankston passed away. Russ Bankston passed away. <sighs> Salute. Cheers. That's it, Salute. 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 You, are, you are a rock star, Hugh. Thanks, brother. Oh. You are a rock star. Ah. Thanks, Hugh. <laughs> I've been working on Huey for a while. I've been working him because I wanted to get him. Uh, I listened to his uh, videos on Facebook once in a while when he posted. But I've been wanting to get him on so he could sing on here. So uh, we do it all. You ain't gonna find this on Pin the Q, bro. You ain't gonna what? find talent like this. You ain't gonna find it anywhere else but here. My God. My goodness. My all right, goodness. Pete, uh, um, I believe we have a show on Tuesday, not Monday. It's a holiday. Yeah. But uh, I will say that I do have a surprise last minute thing for Monday night. So for all you guys out there uh, who have been asking over and over and over again, I, I didn't know if this was a good idea or not. Kevin twisted my arm. I think it's probably going to be a good idea. So we're going to have 
all the getting salty old school tips uh, in multiple episodes. So it's just old school tips. And episode one of old school tips of the day uh, is on Monday night at eight o'clock. And Tuesday, we're back to podcasting. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Thursday, who do we have Thursday? Thursday, we have Bob. Philly guy. Yeah, Bob Marcusello from Philly. Yes. Correct. Oh, we have a Philly guy on Tuesday too, don't we? Don't we have the guy, uh, Eric yeah, Allen? I don't know. Eric Allen. Did you set it up? I did. That's not in the... Uh... What the hell are you asking me for? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll, I'll uh, look on my calendar here, see if I didn't put anything. <laughs> me and Kia. Me and Kia. Yes. Uh, but yeah, anyway, ch check out the old school tips on Monday night. You guys will uh, appreciate that. And, uh, yes. and where can we see uh, you? Where can we see you playing uh, live, bro? Give us a, a couple of plugs here. Uh, I'm actually playing uh, on the third at Hobra out here in Staten Island. Whole bra uh -huh. south, all the way out in Tottenville, uh, on the third. That's four to seven. Little uh, happy hour action. Then another happy hour on Sunday from uh, four to seven at O'Neill's on Forest Avenue in Staten uh -huh. Island. Beautiful. And uh, I got uh, another place, um, Joyce's Tavern on the eleventh. All out here on the South Shore of Staten Island. And I am working on uh, Mr. Beery's in Beth Page. Thanks to Jimmy Keesling. He's hooking me up. Oh, and, excellent. And Jimmy also the, for, uh, Jimmy for every, so all the people that are out there, I'll get a little chance to come out to Long Island. Yeah. And, and for cool. everyone uh, listening who wants to support uh, uh, you here, go to U-E Lynch Music. That's the letter U, the letter E, Lynch, L-Y-N-C-H, music.com. And you can just friend me on Facebook and uh, even on Instagram as u.e.lynch. So I'll Perfect. post it in the uh, description Beautiful. tonight. Oh, well, thank you, Sammy Peters. Sammy Peters, wish me happy birthday. Thank happy you, Sammy Peters. Happy birthday tomorrow to the cool. Tomorrow. Oh, cool. Oh, cool. Happy oh, cool. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Get happy there. birthday, man. So what are you, 40, uh, 42? Yes, 42. Wow. 42. Get the fuck out of here. You gotta <laughs> 54. I'm 54, sorry. baby. I'm sorry. Honestly, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. There's more of the ways than one that I can't be out with you guys tomorrow night. We're going out. Uh, we're going upstate to hang out with a bunch of Brooklyn people upstate. Oh, beautiful. Boo. All right. Man. All right. Don't talk <laughs> politics with Brooklyn people. All I'm right. Have, uh, you ever have an episode with just total ball breaking? We should do an episode where you're just like totally oh, ball breaking. Oh, well, sure. what we usually do, we, we do a five up. minutes of fury at the end where we allow the audience to break our balls <laughs> and say anything they want. My life, my life is born. <laughs> you Dude, it. you know what? Maybe we'll just have a you tell me who you want to get on with, and we'll just break each other's balls. You, you get like, about four about guys. Billy Carlson. We, we didn't talk about Carlson. We Billy Carlson, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, this, right. He may be traveling time, around uh, following the Grateful Dead, though. So, I don't oh, know. Yeah. you know what we'll do? Mrs. Procaccini's birthday is apparently. Oh, my, my uh, uh, it's Sunday. It's on Sunday. Oh, it's, oh no. how do you know mm -hmm. that? Because I know all. You know what we should do, bro? We'll do like the wrestling. Uh, what is that? SummerSlam? Whatever they got. Throw oh, each other over the yeah. ring. I'll wrestle cheese. I'll I'll wrestle cheese. No, no, no. <laughs> we won't wrestle. It'll be... You ain't wrestling cheese. You ain't wrestling cheese. Be... No, I ain't wrestling. I ain't wrestling. No, no, no. It'll be, uh... He grabbed a hold of me at that It'll uh, be verbal, show. verbal wrestling, bro, where we break each other's balls. Yeah, and yeah. uh you won't get another a new guy comes out every 30 <laughs> seconds, bro, and we just start breaking his balls as soon as he gets in there. That's I like good. this I like premise. It. I like that. Uh, you, came, you came up with it, so you're the first guy we're inviting, That's bro. Good. All right. All right. That's good, huh? I can yeah. take it. <laughs> what is that called, Pete? It's not SummerSlam. What is that where somebody new comes out every couple of the Oh, the uh oh, Royal man. Rumble. The Royal Rumble. That's you're gonna have the ball break. <laughs> I like it. The ball breaking Royal Rumble, bro. And they come out every, <laughs> every 30 seconds. It can't be, it can't yeah, be the Royal Rumble for, for legal reasons. So it's got to be like the Regal Beagle. The Royal something. Tumble. Yeah. The, Royal <laughs> the Regal Tumble. <laughs> the Royal Mumble. That's good. The Royal Mumble. The Royal Mumble. <laughs> and then someone's about to say, I'll go home and get your fucking shine box. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, right. by the way, rest in peace, Bye. Ray Liotta, man. 67 years old. Oh, Karen. Man. Karen. 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 Oh, Ray, come on. <laughs> Karen. Karen. He's such an awesome dude. Yeah. I got shit to do at 67, man. Me too. Oh, yeah, bro. man. Me too. Yeah. All, right. Me All right, fellas. Pete. Do it. You go. Just okay. hang, uh, just hang Yeah, hang, hang tight, Hugh. All right, guys, you know the deal. Audio. 
Find us on audio only podcasts on iTunes podcast, Spotify, all the players. We're everywhere. So just subscribe there. It's free and listen to the show when you're driving or whatever. YouTube.com forward slash getting salty experience, guys. That's where you will find this show. And if you're here, hit that like, subscribe, and share button. It helps us out a ton. Okay. Uh, if you're on Instagram, find us at Salty Dog Inc., where you will see the coolest, freshest fire photos in the game. Uh, Mr. Frano works on those, and they really truly are something awesome to behold. So check us out there for last minute show info as well. Getting salty apparel.com, guys. That's why we pay the bills. Get some t-shirts, get some apparel, get some cool guy stuff. Thank you to everybody who donated in the super chat tonight. We really appreciate that a lot. Uh, it's huge. Uh, also, guys, if you're on Facebook, the Getting Salty Fans page is over 42,000 strong. Uh, that's an amazing thing. It's an amazing community, guys. It's all kind of like a global firewire. Uh, a lot of fun going on in there, a lot of ball busting. Uh, check us out there. Guys, if you want to uh, advertise with the show, Getting Salty Ads is uh, at gmail.com. Getting Salty Ads at gmail.com. I'll give you my spiel. Uh, shoot me an email there. Guys, uh, Getting Salty Experience at gmail.com. That is where you can email us. Uh, all your questions for the Q&As. Koob's podcast at gmail.com is where you email us everything for our cock lofts and cocktails show. That would be uh, helmet cam footage, and it doesn't have to be yours. It could be something cool you saw on YouTube. Uh, uh, fire photos, father-son photos, tattoos, rigs, mustache pics, uh, firehouse kitchen table. Tattoos. Hot old lady. Uh, Hot old ladies pictures. And don't forget the new one, the uh, your best recipe. I got to see it on the table. Tell me Yes, what's in yes, it. yeah, your best recipe. And, guys, when you email us all that stuff, tell us who you are and where you're from. If you don't want to, us to mention your name, that's fine. At least tell us what the picture is that we're looking at because – you wouldn't be surprised. Uh, you would be surprised yes. how much shit that we're getting that isn't uh, that doesn't have anything attached to it. And guys, that's all the news that's fit to print. Boom. All right, Hugh, thanks for coming on, brother. Great time, man. Thanks, Different man. look, I love I it. A talented, time. you're a talented mf'er, bro. Good for you. Thanks, man. I wish yeah, I could sing. <laughs> all right, Roof. Uh, we'll see you guys on uh, Tuesday, right? Yeah, that's far. Have a good weekend, everybody. Guys, have a great weekend. Have a great yeah, holiday. Wonderful day. Yes, happy Memorial Day. Happy Remember Memorial those. Day. Yep. All right. See you. Stay low and go. Later. All right, everyone. We'll see you at the big one. Cheers, everybody.